You know, I'm leading with the evangelical. I want Christianity to have a strong flavor. Really, they've shut Christianity down. So they're really being silenced, and we can't let that happen. We can't let that happen. I don't care about the endorsement. They're really being silenced. We can't let that happen. We're not going to let it happen. And we're going to get that thing repealed. And think of the power we have over the Democrats, over the Republicans. I mean, the power is, the power is incredible. We can also agree on the need to stand up to anti-Catholic bias. Do you believe that you've done anything to create a tone where this kind of violence would be encouraged? I hope not. I truly hope not. Knock the crap out of them, would you? Seriously. Just knock the hell out. I promise you, I will pay for the legal fees, I promise. In the good old days, this doesn't happen because they used to treat them very, very rough. And when they protested once, you know, they would not do it again so easily. The protest is over. So the protest has been over for 15 years. And I get a bit cheeky here because I challenge my Protestant pastor friends. If there is no more protest, how can there be a Protestant church? Maybe we now we're all Catholics again. We can also agree on the need to stand up to anti-Catholic bias. That's the man that I believe is going to give America a last minute reprieve. And uh, if you're not going to vote, you should be ashamed of yourself. Uh, you're going to be held seriously, seriously to account by God if you don't vote. Stay strong find new voters, get them to the polls. Like I said, and I'll continue to say, it is pitchfork and torches time in America. What time is it? Pitchfork and torches time in America? My, my, have we forgotten our history. Many are thankful apparently that the lesser evil Donald was chosen as their king. Lesser evil is still evil, my dearest brothers and sisters. Perhaps like the prideful Nebuchadnezzar, this man may be used by God. We can pray for this. However, also please remember that the Bible tells us that the stubborn Pharaoh of ancient Egypt was also used by God according to Romans 9.17. His end was not as good as Nebuchadnezzar's, but yet God's name was declared through him. Now before I come back to Trump, let me first make some things clear about the papacy a power that is very familiar with torches and pitchforks and has been guilty of many atrocities during the Dark Ages of which we seem to have forgotten. And the way she did this was through the use of state power. Let's quickly examine the beasts in Revelation 12 and 13 and see where and how Donald Trump fits into these prophecies. In Revelation 12, we have a dragon. We read of it in Revelation 12, 3. And there appeared another wonder in heaven. And behold, a great red dragon having seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns upon his heads. What do the seven crowns represent? The crowns are important to notice. This is a symbol of imperial or pagan Rome before the papacy is given its power. Rome was a republic until the republic fell and in its place was supplied an imperial tyranny of kingdoms. From 508 to 538, three kingdoms were uprooted by the papacy using kingly power and the papacy was given its power from the emperor when the Ostrogoths were uprooted in 538 AD. A decree was implemented in 538 AD called the Justinian Code. In this decree, we read the following. The code of our Lord, the most sacred emperor Justinian, concerning the most exalted trinity and the Catholic faith, and providing that no one shall dare to publicly oppose them. This was the introduction to the code. In the code, the state was to enforce the Catholic faith by law, and force and persecution was to be used against those who did not accept the state faith. Would you allow U.S. interrogators to waterboard terrorist prisoners? in order to extract information. Absolutely. 
Then they asked the question to me, well, what would you do? I said, I'd prove it immediately, but I'd make it also much worse. They said, what do you mean? I said, I'd do much worse. And don't tell me it doesn't work. Torture works, okay, folks? Torture, don't, you know, I have these guys. Torture doesn't work. Believe me, it works, okay? And waterboarding is your minor form. Some people say it's not actually torture. Let's assume it is. But they asked me the question, what do you think of waterboarding? Absolutely fine. But we should go much stronger than waterboarding. That's the way I feel. We should go much stronger. We have to be very strong, we have to be very vigilant, we have to be very tough. Waterboarding is fine, but it's not nearly tough enough, okay? This was the law of the land until 1798 AD. 1260 years later, when that power was removed by Napoleon under General Berthier, who captured the Pope and declared the monarchy to have ended, and the power exercised by the papacy during this time was responsible for over 50 million martyrs. Some say even up to 150 million martyrs. This tyrannical power is written of in Revelation 13, the next chapter. The full power of not just seven crowns as imperial Rome, but with the additional three horns the first beast of Revelation 13 uprooted, the papacy is represented as having ten crowns and is being given its power from imperial Rome or from the dragon. Revelation 13, 1 and 2. And I stood upon the sand of the sea and saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his heads the name of blasphemy. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, his feet were as the feet of a bear, and his mouth as the mouth of a lion. And the dragon gave him his power, and his seat, and great authority. This church and state power that was given by the dragon continued for 42 months. We read in verse 5 of the same chapter, and there was given unto him a mouth, speaking great things and blasphemies. And power was given unto him to continue forty and two months. The forty-two months is also referred to as 1260 days in prophecy. And the Bible tells us that we are to have a day for a year in prophecy, Ezekiel 4 verse 6. So therefore, this period of 42 months or 1260 days is actually 1260 years, which span the time from 538 AD to 1798 AD. We are told that when the power was taken from the papacy, that this was called a deadly wound, Revelation 13, verse 3. And I saw one of its heads as it were wounded to death, and his deadly wound was healed, and all the world wondered after the beast. And it certainly did. This deadly wound in 1798, the capture of the Pope, was also written about in verse 10 of the same chapter. It says, He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. The Pope being led into captivity was the fulfillment of this. The sword being the use of force. And right around 1798, when the Pope goes into captivity, we see in the next verse another beast rising up out of the earth. Revelation 13 verse 11. And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth. And he had two horns like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon. This beast comes up with only two horns, but unlike the other beast, it has no crowns. The crowns symbolize royal power. The reason being that there are no crowns was that they had just declared independence from King George of Britain in 1776. They were now free from royal oppression and religious persecution, and now, instead of declaring the United States to be a monarchy and crowning George Washington the king, they chose instead a republic. No kings, no crowns. America is the beast represented in this prophecy, which was very lamb-like when it came up. But we must note that this beast would eventually speak like a dragon. In the next verse, we read the following, Revelation 13, 12. And he exercises all the power of the first beast before him, and causes the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast, whose deadly wound was healed. The power of the first beast is to be exercised. The power of church and state that was exercised during the Dark Ages is to be exercised in America. The deadly wound of the papacy would also be healed. It is interesting that America would speak like a dragon. The Bible tells us that out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh, Mark 12, 34. Washington, D.C. is considered to be the heart of the nation. The Congress of the United States was considered to be a Protestant government, and the Constitution, especially the First Amendment, were what made this government Protestant. James Madison, known as the father of the Constitution, who was also the fourth president of the United States, said this, 
The purpose of separation of church and state is to keep forever from these shores the ceaseless strife that has soaked the soil of Europe in blood for centuries. The First Amendment was specifically placed in the Constitution by men like Madison. But on September 24th last year, right out of the heart of the beast, the papacy was speaking. And interestingly, he said that we need to heal open wounds. We must be especially attentive to every type of fundamentalism, whether religious, or of any other kind. The contemporary world, with its open wounds, which affect so many of our brothers and sisters. Now it's time for America to bind the wounds of division, have to get together. Demands that we confront every form of polarization which wow, which would divide it into these two camps. Prophetic, is it not? Stop extremism, stop fundamentalism, those Bible-believing Christians. Is this how the wound is healed, using state power maybe? On September 25th, the very next day, the papacy was in New York addressing the power-grabbing United Nations and the power being given back to them is incredible. And I've documented this in other videos already, such as the videos about getting out of the cities that no man might buy or sell. Pope Francis has not just been trying to unite the state power, but also been making huge rounds in trying to unite all the religions into a one world religion. La mayor parte de los habitantes del planeta se declaran creyentes. Esto debería provocar un diálogo entre las religiones. No debemos dejar de orar por él y colaborar con quienes piensan distinto. Confío en Buda. Creo en Dios. Creo en Jesucristo. Creo en Dios. Alá. Muchos piensan distinto, sienten distinto, buscan a Dios o encuentran a Dios de diversa manera. En esta multitud, en este abanico de religiones, hay una sola certeza que tenemos para todos. Todos somos hijos de Dios. Earlier this year in the heart of the nation, Washington DC, an event called Together 2016 happened, which called one million Christians to gather in Washington DC, the biggest Christian gathering in American history. This event was orchestrated by Nick Hall and the papacy was a headliner at this event. We've been divided. We got this movement here and this denomination here and that group here. And so on July 16th, we're gonna see all of these waves collide. Catholics and Lutherans and, and evangelicals and charismatics literally rallying across the nation saying, you know what? We may not say the same things, but we're on the same team. We're lifting up Jesus and we're gonna saturate this nation. Man, that could change the world. Another event was called by many of these evangelicals only a few months later in September of this year, which was called The Gathering. On the about page of their website, we are told the purpose of these evangelicals uniting. We read the following. The church must again become the conscience of the government. Through its national psalm assembly, it should clearly and respectfully call political leadership to God's principles of government. Yes, this is their goal, to unite all religions and to become the conscience of the government, to control the state power, just as happened during the dark ages with the papacy. They are becoming intolerant to those who uphold the word of God. At a time when others are trying to divide us along lines of religion or sect, we have to reaffirm that most fundamental of truths. We are all God's children. We're all born equal, with inherent dignity. We have to understand, attack on one faith is an attack on all our faiths. Todos somos hijos de Dios. We've got to make sure the hate crimes are punished and that the civil rights of all Americans are upheld. Hillary may not respect the conscience of the people as with the evangelicals, and just last week, speaking at the Women in the World Summit, Democratic 2016 contender Hillary Clinton said this about those who have religious convictions on social issues. Deep-seated cultural codes, religious beliefs, and structural biases 
have to be changed. Listen to his 2008 opinion of Hillary Clinton. I know her, and she'd make a good president or a good vice president. Uh, Hillary Clinton, I think, is a terrific woman. I mean, I'm a little biased because I've known her for years. Do you think that uh, she says she's out at the end of this term? you think we're going to see her again running for office? I think so. I think, you know, assuming she's healthy, which I hope she will be, uh, I think she probably runs uh, after the next four years, I would imagine. Hillary's a great friend of mine. Uh, her husband is a great friend of mine. They're fantastic people. I mean, you know the thing, they get a bad knock. She's a very nice woman, but they are good people. Well, first of all, I know her very well, and I know her husband very well, and I like them both. And they are, uh, you know, just really terrific people. I like them both very much, but I think you'll be, you know, you'll be looking at the record of Hillary Clinton and how did she do as Secretary of State? Probably above and beyond everybody else and everything else. But she was not the candidate that would fit the prophecy of Revelation 13. She was not the one the evangelicals could use. Regarding America, the second beast, we read further in Revelation 13 that it would make an image of the papacy or a copy. Something very similar to what happened during the Dark Ages, giving power back to the church. Verse 15 of Revelation 13 reads thus, He had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause, that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. This is coming down to a worship issue. The state power giving power back to the church, similar to Justinian transferring power to the papacy in 538 AD. We will see this duplicated in America, a copy or image of the first beast. Hillary does not fit the bill that would fulfill this prophecy. However, Donald Trump does. Do you know I'm leading with the evangelicals? I'm a good Christian, and I'm leading with the evangelicals. And I want to tell you something. Christianity, and I put it in the same vein, and sometimes in the same sentences, Christianity is being chipped away at in this country. In this country. It's being chipped away at, and I'm not going to let it happen. Do you know I was with... I was with a whole room full, like 50 uh, pastors, ministers, great people, some of whom I knew pretty well and some I don't. And I said to him, let me ask you a question. How many Christians, evangelicals, but just Christian, do we have in this country? And they were saying maybe 250 million, maybe 260 million. I said, so that's more than we have women. It's more than we have men. It's by far the biggest group. Then why aren't you banding together and getting the kinds of things you want? When... Why is it that you people don't have a stronger lobby? And during Lyndon, Lyndon Johnson's regime, I will call it, because that's sort of what it was, if you think about it, but during his term as president, they passed something where the tax deduction is under siege if they do anything that's a little bit off, okay? So they're gonna lose tax-exempt status, right? And I said, wait a minute, that's right, that's the answer. I figured, you know, I'm a pretty smart guy, I figured things out pretty quickly. So as soon as I mentioned it, I said, that's it. Because I said then, so the man walking, I was in Trump Tower, I pointed down to the sidewalk, there were people walking on the sidewalk. I said, then those people walking on the sidewalk are more powerful than you people in the clergy, the pastors, the ministers, the priests, the people in the clergy, they're more powerful. They said, that's right. I said, not gonna happen anymore. We're gonna get rid of that thing. I want Christianity to have a strong flavor. Why did we ever pass a thing? And, and it's so important. I mean, really, they've shut Christianity down. And these are great people, but they're afraid to do. For instance, some people came up to me, Mr. Trump, I love you. You're the best. You're gonna be the greatest leader. You're gonna be, I want to endorse you. I'm endorsing you but I'm not allowed to do it publicly because if I do it publicly, I may lose for the church the tax-exempt status. So they're really being silenced, and we can't let that happen. We can't let that happen. I don't care about the endorsement. They're really being silenced. We can't let that happen. We're not going to let it happen, and we're going to get that thing repealed. And think of the power we have over the Democrats, over the Republicans. I mean, the power is, the power is incredible.
power like the papacy had to continue for 42 months. Power like the power given by the dragon to the papacy. Power to give life to the image of the papacy. And the people that will form this image are none other than the evangelical, once Protestant Christians. While the evangelicals are having meetings such as Together 2016, Trump is behind their banding together to form a stronger union and gaining the power of the state. And he is saying he is the one who wants to give them the power. I understand that the relations between Trump and the Pope have been somewhat rocky. The Pope has said that Trump isn't a Christian because he wants to build a wall between Mexico and the United States. But these wounds will be healed. On September 22nd, what does Trump do? Trump names 34 Catholic advisors. Do you think maybe he's working at smoothing things out? And only recently at a Jesuit sponsored dinner, after the final debate between him and Hillary, Trump said the following. We can also agree on the need to stand up to anti-Catholic bias. So we need not be deceived as to what this means. Are you one of those who might believe the papacy fits into the end time prophecy? Do you have some of those anti-Catholic beliefs that Trump is talking about? Well, then he's speaking against you. Don't be deceived. They want to unite. We've got to be very strong, very, very smart. And we've got to come together, not only as a nation, but as a world community. Thank you very much. God bless you. And God bless America. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Catholics are an important part of the American story. America has been strengthened by hardworking Catholics. From New York to California, the Catholic story is truly unique, and it's a great story. From marching for civil rights to educating millions of children, serving the poor and helping to find the pro-life movement, clergy and lay Catholics across the country have made countless contributions to the American success and the American success story. Washington politicians have been hostile to the church. They have been hostile to Catholics. They have been hostile to the members of Catholicism. My administration will stand side by side with the American Catholics to promote the values we all share as Christians and Americans. God bless you. God bless the United States of America. We will make America great again. But furthermore, Trump has a host of other Christian advisors among the evangelicals, starting with Kenneth Copeland. You're going to be held seriously, seriously to account by God if you don't vote. And you're going to find that out before this broadcast is over. You're going to be guilty of murder. You're going to be guilty of an abomination of God. Copeland was at first supporting Ted Cruz. When Ted was nine for a whole year, he got a dose of conservative politics from a Christian <laughs> worldview every day every for a year. Day. Before my son left high school, he was passionate about the Constitution, and that passion became, became like, like firing fire. his bones. Aspiration, is that like sweat on my butt? No, no, oh, I see, what you want me to do, what I want to do in life. Well, take over the world, world domination, you know, rule everything, rich, powerful, that sort of stuff. The reason I know my son Ted will not, not compromise his principles in Washington, Washington is that fire is as alive, alive today, today as it was, it was 30, 30 years, years ago. Ted tells us that his hero is his father, Raphael Cruz, who is also a minister, and Copeland was praying for Ted to get the presidency. Now, Ted Cruz was also recently behind Sylvia Allen, who was supporting Mandatory Church on Sunday. Yeah, we're talking about State Senator Sylvia Allen, and she thinks the nation is suffering from a moral decay. And the cure for that decay, she believes, is church, and she also believes that there could be, should be a new law forcing people to attend. I believe what's happening to our country is that there's a horrible erosion of the soul of America. Okay, yes. so Senator Sylvia Allen thinks the nation is heading in the wrong direction. But instead of just complaining, the Republican from Snowflake offered up this solution. Probably we should be debating a bill requiring every American to attend a church of their choice on Sunday. Now Ted came out in support of these beliefs. Also, Ted's father, Raphael, was very forward regarding his remarks on church and state. Thank you for being my hero. His father, Rafael Cruz, has been front and center in both Cruz's campaign and his life. Separation of church and state 
Well, separation of church and state is not in the Constitution. It's not in the Declaration. As a matter of fact, the Word of God tells us exactly the opposite. In 2014, a meeting was scheduled by Kenneth Copeland to meet with Bishop Tony Palmer. They formerly worked together, and Palmer was already friends with Pope Francis before Francis became Pope. So they scheduled this meeting to put aside differences and to unite the Charismatics with the Catholic Church. Worldwide, there are 1.2 billion Catholics and approximately a half a billion Charismatics. This in total is one quarter of the world's population. In these two movements together, that is five times the amount of people that live in the United States. So this event was nothing short of a major event. Uh -huh, yeah, whoa. I tell you, I'm telling you right now, heaven is thrilled over this. The message was that the Lutherans had agreed to sign a document in 1999 that they could agree with the papacy that faith saved us unto good works. And so the conclusion was that this was what the protest centered around. And finally, that the protest was over since signing this document. So the protest has been over for 15 years. And I get a bit cheeky here, because I challenge my Protestant pastor friends. If there is no more protest, how can there be a Protestant church? Maybe we now we're all Catholics again. <laughs> I think they missed what the protest was truly over. Force, persecution, millions of martyrs. The protest was about the blood that was spilled during the Dark Ages by the church and state controlled papacy. But Palmer released another video only a couple weeks later, which labeled those who did not accept that the protest was over as spiritual racists. We may be living officially in a post-Protestant era, but many Christians today continue to suffer from spiritual racism. Copeland continued this spiritual racism rhetoric himself and was almost enraged at those who didn't agree. Now, somebody said, well, is Copeland turning Catholic? No. They asked Pope Francis, uh, are you, do, do you think, do, do you think these, these people should convert? And he shouted, no, that would be wrong. We're coming together in the unity of our faith, not the unity of our religions. Man. Hallelujah. Oh, they, I'm telling you folks, this is just absolutely huge. And I'll tell you why. The, the spirit of division is behind all racism. Yes. Racism is not just skin color or ethnic background. Let me give you this statement because I've got a number of things here to show you that I want to, and if I get turned loose on this, I'd, <laughs> man. Uh, the devil takes a difference, magnifies it in hate, and divides the house. And a house divided against itself Cannot Tony Palmer further continued his attack on Protestants or spiritual racists as he calls them by saying that in order to deal with these heretics or racists, we need to abolish the law that empowers them. The first step in dealing with spiritual racism is to abolish the law which empowers it. Now what law gives you a right to protest the papacy and her dirty deeds? How about the First Amendment? Amendment 1 of the Constitution of the United States, Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof or abridging the freedom of speech or of the press or of the right of the people to peaceably to assemble and to petition the government for a redress of grievances. This law has been a thorn in the side of the papacy since the day it was made. It gives you the right to peaceably assemble, to petition the government and the right to protest. In the good old days, this doesn't happen because they used to treat them very, very rough. And when they protested once, you know, they would not do it again so easily. Now, Copeland and Palmer are considered charismatics. 
The manifestations of the spirit are devilish spirits which do miracles and great wonders. We read of it in Revelation 13 and verse 13 and 14. And he doeth great wonders so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men, and deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast which had the wound by a sword and did live. This fire is similar to that which came from heaven in Acts chapter 2 when the early apostles began to speak in different languages or tongues to help spread the gospel. This was considered a gift of the Holy Spirit. However, the tongues these men have are but a counterfeit, and they are but the wine of Babylon. Babel is where the confusion of tongues began. In Revelation 17.4, we read of modern Babylon having a golden cup of wine in her hand. The wine is a symbol of doctrine. Isaiah 28.7 but they also have erred through wine and through drink are out of the way. The priest and the prophet have erred through strong drink. They are swallowed up of wine. They are out of the way through strong drink. They err in vision and stumble in judgment. These are the charismatics. The drunken wine of Babylon. Now a very close friend of Kenneth Copeland is Rodney Howard Brown. He is dubbed the Holy Ghost Bartender. What kind of wine do you think he's serving? Lord, Brooklyn, shake him Jesus, where are you from? New Jersey, fire. Any workers? Work <laughs> Notice Copeland and Rodney Howard Brown as they babble on. <laughs> oh yeah, 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 yeah. We're not worried what other people think. No, uh -huh. doesn't matter what they think. Oh, <laughs> Now it is interesting that both Rodney and Kenneth are telling us to vote for Trump. That's the man that I believe is going to give America a last minute reprieve. And uh, if you're not going to vote, you should be ashamed of yourself. Uh, and and you, you sit still, you sit right where you are. Don't you turn that off saying, well, I ain't going to vote anyway. You're going to be held seriously, seriously to account by God if you don't vote. And you're going to find that out before this broadcast is over. You're going to be guilty of murder. You're going to be guilty of an abomination of God. But what are Rodney Howard Brown's views on keeping the church separate from the state? We've allowed the devil to come in and take over every realm of society and the church has done absolutely very little about it. Because we were told it's not our duty. We were told separation of church and state, which is a bunch of garbage. The separation of church and state is to keep the government from sticking its nose in the church. People don't even know the history of this great country. What would it be like if these men were given power by Trump? Let's start with Paul Crouch. He is the founder of Trinity Broadcasting Network, which is where we find all these charismatic preachers, such as Brown, Copeland, and Benny Hinn being televised. What is the spirit behind these men? Is it the Holy Spirit? The Bible says that the fruit of the Spirit is peace. And I want to say to all you scribes, Pharisees, heresy hunters, all of you that are going around picking little bits of a doctrinal error out of everybody's eyes and dividing the body of Christ and arguing over splinters and doctrinal hairs and, and dissipating and wasting all of our time when the world's going to hell! I say get out of God's way! Quit blocking God's bridges! Or God's going to shoot you if I don't... Does that sound like the Spirit of God, peace? How about Kenneth Copeland? 
several people that I know have criticized. Some of them are dead right today in an early grave because of it, and there's more than one of them got cancer. Or maybe Benny Hinn. Of God, quit attacking man of God by name. Somebody's attacking me because of something I'm teaching. Let me tell you something, brother. You watch it. You're God in heaven. I wish I can just move. They call out the ministry in my foot. You know, I've looked for one verse in the Bible. I just can't seem to find it. One verse that said, if you don't like him, kill him. I really wish I could find it. But don't mention people's names on your radio program and your TV program, thinking you're doing God's service. You're not. You stink, frankly. That's the way I think about it. Sometimes I wish God would give me a Holy Ghost machine gun. I'll blow your head. That doesn't sound like the fruit of the Spirit. It sounds like the spirit of Antichrist. He's looking for a verse about killing. I have one here, and I believe it is referring to these men should they fail to repent and be converted. Revelation 13, 15 says he had power to give life to the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. This is the last prophecy to be fulfilled. In the good old days, this doesn't happen because they used to treat them very, very rough. And when they protested once, you know, they would not do it again so easily. I love the old days. You know what they used to do to guys like that when they were in a place like this? They'd be carried out on a stretcher, folks. I'd like to punch him in the face, I'll tell you. Mr. Trump, 17 days later, that actually happened. One of your supporters decided to sucker punch a protester. The protester never sees it coming. He is wrestled to the ground by deputies. The guy who smacked him goes right back to his seat. You bet I like it. Yeah? What'd you like about it? Knocking hell out of that big mouth. Yes, he deserved it. The next time we see him, we might have to kill him. These are not people. Just remember that. Do whatever you have to do to him, I don't care. And you know what? I think I'm totally within my rights to say that. Video shot by WLKY has now gone viral. It shows Trump supporters pushing a woman out of yesterday's rally in Louisville. You can see several people inside the Kentucky International Convention Center shoving the protester until she left. Oh, this is amazing. So much fun. I love it. I love it. We having a good time? USA! USA! Yeah, get him out. Try not to hurt him. If you do, I'll defend you in court. Don't worry about it. You know, part of the problem and part of the reason it takes so long is nobody wants to hurt each other anymore, right? And they're being politically correct the way they take them out. So it takes a little bit longer. And honestly, protesters, they realize it. They realize that there are no consequences to protesting anymore. There used to be consequences. There are none anymore. Some have said Donald Trump fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah 45 and Cyrus. The term Cyrus means anointed or Messiah. And Isaiah 45 refers to Jesus Christ as the anointed one. He is our savior, not Donald Trump. His kingdom was not of this world and neither is ours. During the election process, men like Donald Trump and Ted Cruz were arch enemies. That's a matter you of principle and I'll, and I'll tell you. You are the single biggest liar. You probably are worse than Jeb Bush. You are the single biggest liar. Politicians. Look, the truth is he's a nasty guy. He was so nice to me. I mean, I knew it. I was watching. I kept saying, come on, Ted, let's go, kid. But he's a nasty guy. Nobody likes him. Nobody in Congress likes him. Nobody likes him anywhere once they get to know him. He's a very, um, he's got an edge that's not good. You can't make deals with people like that, and it's not a good thing. It's not a good thing for the country. Very nasty guy. After the election process, they are best friends. I think you're gonna have probably George Bush as your next president. He's an excellent guy, an excellent man. He's a friend of mine, and I'm here for that reason. Uh, I'm here because I'm a guest of Vice President Bush, Mrs. Bush. My mother calls me my, my uh, fourth brother. Calls him my fourth brother. He's that brother. The black sheep of the family. That barber began to refer to me as her black sheep son. You know, the one that <laughs> strays, there's one in every family. Lion Ted Cruz, Lion Ted. This man is a pathological liar. 
Donald Trump's and Ted Cruz's exchanges may have been the nastiest ever seen in presidential primaries, but the two appear to have buried the hatchet after Senator Cruz was seen walking out of Trump Tower amid a report Trump is considering him for attorney general. Politics can be like wrestling. During the match, they want to destroy each other, but after they are done, they go out drinking together. Be not deceived. The agenda has been in place for a long, long time. Please stay tuned for our next video, which will be on the charismatics and the counterfeit tongues and Bible prophecy. Be sure to like and subscribe and also share this far and wide as we need to give a cry with a loud voice right now. And private message me if you'd like DVDs or booklets in order to share this gospel. Right now, birds, fish, and all kinds of creatures just dropping dead in huge numbers for what seems like no reason. Just in the last two weeks, the theories and speculation running rampant. Hundreds of dead seals in Labrador. These seals washed up around Hopedale. There are similar reports from other communities. No one knows why these animals died.